Ready? Yes. Okay. So just go ahead and get in Lightroom, open it up, and mine usually starts here where it says library at the top, because sometimes you might be in this module, but go ahead and just hit library, and go down here to the bottom where it says import, dot, dot, dot. Does everybody see that on your computer? Oh, you're doing the import already. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, this is importing into Lightroom. Yeah. And so I just go find my folder. Let's just drop it down and put this all. There we go. Okay, right, so here's all my pictures I took yesterday and this morning. <clears throat> and then you just click import in the bottom right. And that's going to bring out all of your files in. Let me give us a little, little preview thumbnails. Is everybody looking like this? No. No? But okay. I had trouble with it before. It says fail to initialize camera raw. Click on that LRC. Click on this creative cloud. Yeah. And then go into apps. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Okay. So those are mobile. Scroll. Yeah. You know, judges, belts, and X. Scroll down. Okay. Go to all apps. Ah. There we go. Updates available. Click where it says update uh, on the classic. Click update available. There you go. Click that. <clears throat> and then hit update on the classic. And then that should get you updating. Is yours looking like this, Kara? Well, I'm, so mine just says Lightroom, not Lightroom Classic. Does that mean I'm not in the right program? It, Lightroom will still work. We're just going to be prepping our files for stacking, so it's no big deal. It's just going to look a little different. Well, <laughs> I'm sure I can. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 I just hit add photos. Right. I was just. I didn't know if I should get into the Lightroom Classroom. If you have it, if you have it, I think I have access to it. Yeah. I just didn't I had no problem with Photoshop. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. If you'll, yeah, you can get classic if you want. It's a little bit. Yeah, yeah do update. Right? Oh, and it won't. It's easier. It won't. Save your work. Adobe Lightroom Classic update without. Closing. It won't allow her to update. Oh, save your work. Oh, okay. It's just because it's open. So do you oh. have, you should have the Adobe Creative I'm telling you, I've done it. I'm telling you, I've done it. I'm telling you, I've done it. It's bad. No, because I'm telling you, I... Y'all, everybody has to start somewhere, and like I, I just know this because I mean, I'm a graphic designer. No. You know what I mean? So I had to grow that in Adobe, down. essentially. Why are you not close? Scroll down. I need you to quit. Yeah, Force quit. Yeah, yeah. Classic, no. I just did the wrong one. Yeah. Force quit. That shouldn't take too long. Yeah. Five minutes. Oh, wait, no. Yeah. I didn't know between Lightroom and Lightroom Classic. I just wanted to download it. So. Perfect. So hers is downloading, yours is downloading. So, yeah, it will just take us a second. My advice is always start with um, the classic because mm -hmm. that's all local on your disk. Oh, and then okay. at some point, if you have a reason to use the cloud base after you're familiar with it, then start using that. That's, that seems to be the safest way to do it. Yeah, it's crazy how they, because I mean, classic wasn't, it was just Lightroom, <laughs> you know what I mean? And then it came out with CC. So they have become classic. And I was like, I just really want my old school library, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Adobe's kind of, their original idea was when they first went to the, it switched it around. So they had the desktop version, which is the classic, and then the cloud-based version. At that time, their thinking was, well, you know, we're going to get everybody to store all their photos in the Adobe cloud ecosystem. And they're going to pay us yearly for basically renting space on their servers. And most people don't want to do that. You know, they, they're either using already Dropbox or Google Files or 
some other place and they don't want to start paying another company just yep. to host their their images so they're sort of backed off on that mm -hmm. so right now nobody even in adobe knows where they're going to be going with this in the future oh. um, some people are saying that they're just going to end up dropping the lightroom and all going back to the the classic oh, so who knows it's in a state of flux right oh now. my i only use the regular lightroom i don't use the classic, classic. And I'm going to show you all some really cool, like with some of the updates recently, I think in the last year, they added like really cool masking inside Lightroom, but it's just like click on a button, you can be like sky, and hit the sky button and it masks the whole sky for you. So you can just... That's so hard. That's so much work. I uh, know. Uh, it's crazy. And then you can just go in and fine tune the sky and bring all your colors out in the sky and not mess with your foreground. And then if you say, oh, well, I want the foreground, you can hit sky again and just invert it and then it'll... I like the sky, and it just flips it and does everything else, and then you can do your foreground separately. So you can really get in and just edit very fine tune. You know? And it does that. It's really fine. Yeah, it's yeah. crazy how I can just pick up those little details. In Photoshop, I mean, when I went to a couple years ago with a Instagram influencer, she's a Sony ambassador. She's crazy editing style. And we were sitting in editing classes and she's trying to teach us how to mask for sky replacement, you know, for Milky Way and stuff. And it was just like, whoosh, so over my head. And since then I can just go into Photoshop and go edit sky replacement. <laughs> <laughs> takes it from like hours to minutes. <laughs> yeah, you'll have to show me that. It's awesome. Um, I don't need to sit in Lightroom. I don't... No, if you're having any issues, it's at 1%. It's just that they're in here. Oh, that's fine. I can just show you the far looks and everything. No, no, that's fine. Just go ahead and open regular. And that's okay. Yes. It'll work. It's broken for a while. So, we're not doing it. We're not going to be using it. Will the way that you use it be much different between the two? Like the functions of it? Yeah, it's going to be just organized. Yeah. And it'll look similar. So, when I'm going through the motions, you'll see. It's just, you'll see, it's like a, this one looks more modern in right. okay. <laughs> This one's more boxy, that one's more bubbly. <laughs> but yeah, just go ahead and add your photos in. And then, um, so do you normally just add all your photos at once or do you like parse out like the ones that maybe don't make the cuts <laughs> and you even deserve editing before you add? I just add them all, all in there. Yeah. And then just and and it's, it. it's, okay. it's funny because you what you think is not going to look good and preview when you get it on a big screen. Oh, oh, I know. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> Ones that are out of focus. Exactly. I'll have a lot of them. Or you may like love it. one, then you get it in, you're like, ooh. <laughs> that was not right. So, did your still update? It's starting. Yeah. It's starting. It's at 5%. Oh, dang. You got a speed racer over there. <laughs> <laughs> she started here. <laughs> I did just do it. I mean, it, this is must be a brand new update. It I must had be. just done it. Must be a maybe why yours is acting funny because it was like, whoa, in between updates. This photo was super fun. It was just a light painting mess, but look how fun that is. <laughs> that is fun. <laughs> light splits. Oh, that's funny. Who's the one with all y'all? Who's right here? There we go. There you mm. are. Aw, oh, look another way. Mm -hmm. This morning was very pastel and pretty. Yeah. Did you feel better this morning? Mm hmm. Good. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was tough last night. Yeah, even just asleep, trying to fall asleep. That we had to move our campsite, and there was a dog, a, a very large, like wolf thing, that came over to us, and yeah. Ready. Ready. Mm -hmm.
Did your steering board is over there on your It's working on it. Yeah. Working on it? Perfect. Yeah. Sweet. How many photos did you take? What does it say? I only took 208. In my other folder, I think it said 400 or something. Nice. Uh, I mean, there's just so many more just like me clicking to see what it looks like. Yeah. yeah. I'm just like, I don't know if this is in focus. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, of that, I mean, there's like a hundred that are even, you know, in focus and like <laughs> sort of oriented. I don't know. <laughs> That's the fun where you're, you're like, oh, wow. <laughs> that was a lot of clicks last night. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was going to be a lot of junk. <laughs> Attempt at videography. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there it goes. <laughs> oh, oh, how pretty. Oh, I like that. Yeah, that's neat. Oh. Uh. <laughs> there you guys go. My first video. <laughs> it's pretty. I just had it on auto. <laughs> I don't know a thing about videography. That's a whole other beast now, let me tell you. Hmm. It's crazy. Oh, where's the little frog? There's a little yeah, frog butt. I mean, come on now. Have you ever seen a butt cheek? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at those little butt cheeks. <laughs> That's really funny. Thank you. <laughs> he was just waiting for that sun this morning. <laughs> This was a free preset I got, it was one of my first presets, and I was figuring out presets, and it was free. But it, I love it, it does so good for just a basic, you know, click. Oh, wow. Yeah. How's it doing? 12%? 12. 12. How's yours doing, Kara? Oh, I canceled it. Oh. I mean, it was sitting at one, and then it was oh. actually like the regular um, one needed to update, and so and it wasn't uploading my photos at first. I just canceled it. I'm like, I don't think my computer can handle everything at once. So. Did you get your photos added? In? Yeah. Oh, perfect. You're, okay, so yours is ready? So just, yeah. Okay. Yep. Do you mind if we just walk ahead a little bit? That's okay. Is that okay? Because um, we can, I can walk you through it again, real quick. Yeah, and I don't, I don't. We're recording too. So That's true. Yeah. I I have a affinity that I know a little bit. It would work for now, while I'm waiting. Sure. Yeah. Let's just and if, at, stop and ask questions anytime if you feel anything okay. like if you're. Feeling like uh, something's not making sense. Okay. So what I'm going to do tonight, or today, we're just <clears throat> going to work on how to stack those pictures we took last night. Because I said how important stacking was. Whenever you work with higher ISOs to keep your shutter speed lower, you're introducing noise. So we're going to get rid of that noise today, and we're going to come out with a clean, crisp photo, and then we're going to run it through editing and learn how to like stretch your histogram and do things like that. And then that way we can get as much information out of the picture that we can get. So. 
typically how I know that where to start counting backwards to get my stack is like here I changed compositions obviously I nailed it and I changed compositions so here I was a vertical and then I went to a landscape so I know my stack for this image starts here and so I'm going to count back nine so there's one two three four five six seven eight nine now maybe you only took four or maybe you only took six or whatever I took nine so I can go back nine and so to prep your file to get ready for starting landscape stacker you got all these tools over here all these slider adjustments we're not going to do much on this front end you can see it was shot at 3600 which is where I want it to be anyway but see my data up here now i am stretching my his my histogram is kind of falling off this so it's good I'm getting, that's that's quite a bit of data to work with at night um but i'm going to come down here and i'm just going to raise the exposure about 0.3 and then i'm going to lower my contrast by half and see how that kind of changed this it gave me a little bit more mm -hmm. and see but made the photo a little bit muddled but now look at this detail i pulled out in the sand that I couldn't see before. I'm gonna actually flip this light, if y'all don't mind, just so you can actually see what it's doing. Is that better? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so now I've got the sand textures, pulling, things like that. Um, so now I'm gonna go down here and I'm going to just skip through all this. I'm gonna turn off sharpening, so it automatically does a sharpening thing. And I'm gonna off all denoise and my import loves to do the enable profile correction uncheck that you don't want that <clears throat> and chromatic aberration removing it that's fine okay that's only thing i do to get ready to stack it so i've kind of made it look a little less interesting honestly a little more muddy and muddled and so flat. you do that for each one well, what you can do for a little trick, so I just got this one done. So then I'm gonna go and I'm gonna shift click the last one in it and highlight all of them and then hit sync and uh -huh. synchronize. So it just yes, does all nine for me. Do so the exact same. Does it sync based on the first one? On the yeah, the first one that's highlighted the brightest. It's gonna sync them all the same way. So just, you know, if you wanna double check, you can go in here and click and be like, did it? Yeah, there's my up, down, nothing else, sharpening's off, denoise is off. Okay, cool, it did That's it. That's a big time saver. Huge time hack. Mm -hmm. So now I've got all the nine highlighted. And so another time hack, because I need to export these to you know, get ready to import them into starting landscape stacker. So shift Apple E or you can even just go up to File, Export, and it's going to pull up the export box. So I'm going to make sure that I am putting it in the right folder. So, use my hard drive here. Oh, and then you save um, it. Yeah, and so I can just go in here, but okay, there's here, Stack. Right, because these are the ones I'm going to be stacking, so it goes into that stack folder. I choose that folder. It's going to need to be a TIFF. I don't want to resize to fit that. I'll make sure this is 300 until I've been doing real estate photos. Make sure it's 16 bit, pro photo RGB, export. And it's exporting those nine pictures for me. Did that all make sense to you? I'm not at all where you are. So I'm coming. I mean, I'm just, I don't know who wants to get to this. That's how we want to get to this. No, so, yeah. Mine was a little different. I'm not sure where everything yeah. was at. Yeah. Through. No, you're so I think I have like four here. Perfect. Perfect. I haven't done any of the changes. Remember how I said like we'll change the color later in yeah. notes? So they they are. are so it's, th it's shot at 70 to 800. So they're not that. They have Ooh. these black down things. Down. They're these oh, special grains. Oh, actually about 3600. 
Yeah. 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 Y
Stacking software is really cool because what it does, if you notice those stars moved, right? All night. They move over around the terrain. And so it's going to take it and it's going to realign all of it to one. You know, it's nice. lovely. There's all nice. pinpoint. It's very free and clean. Start your project, mm -hmm. okay. And then um, you're gonna pick your um, your stack. So there's my stack. Awesome. You go in here and select all of them and open. <laughs> and it's gonna read these. So if I remember Sequator correctly, it does not work with raw files. Or really? Does change that? Oh. I don't know. I don't use it anymore, so I use Starline State. Yeah, Tiff's man. <laughs> I can probably pull it out again. Uh, we'll, we'll find out real quick. Oh, okay. So it loaded your files. That's all. So, I needed to know. so how do you? Stack raw files? Uh, yes and no, and I'm going to talk about it when I do my <laughs> talking. So. Okay. All right, so there it went through, it found all, it, it grabbed all nine, right? And it's like saying, find the sky, right? Help me find the sky. I'm putting red dots where I think the sky is. And it did really good, it did really well. Now I'll go in and see how whenever I put my pin, you know, it's now a red dot because over here I've got an add red dot. So I'm just going to go through where there's gaps and just do, to no rhyme or reason to it, just kind of scribble in the spots that aren't so full. And then what I also do is I go right here at the horizon because I had a hard time with light pollution and I just do this right at the tree line. So it kind of knows, oh, this is still the sky way down here. Now, sometimes it might think that there's stars in your foreground and it'll have red dots down here. Mm -hmm. If you don't want that, you go over here where it says erase red dots and click it and, it, and then just come in and erase your red dot out. Oh. Okay. So now I've got my red dots pretty much covering all the sky. I'm going to tell it fine sky. Now it's computing my mass. It did pretty good except for the light pollution <laughs> and bubbles, but that's okay. So now see it missed this area right here. So you just take this, it's a brush and it's ready for you and you just brush in. If you need it, the brush to be bigger to cover more area, you just close bracket and it makes it bigger. And then you can just really go fast. And then like here, you can just go in a bit. Hey, what? On on what what did you push again? Um, uh, it's just automatically whenever you go in to paint in the sky, it's got this paintbrush ready for you. Okay. And you just click and drag, and it just paints it in for you. Now, if you need the brush bigger, you open bracket, it makes the brush bigger. Okay. Or if you need a small area, you just open bracket. 
I have had Starry Stacker on my computer and I have not been doing this. So <laughs> obviously I've been doing a few things wrong here. <laughs> all right, so that's a really good mask of the sky. You know, it's got it all the way down to the horizon. It's looking good. So now I'm going to tell it to align and composite. <laughs> Oh, because it looks different. Yeah, yeah. there's nothing the same. So yeah, why don't you just watch what she's doing here? And when she's done with that part, I can work with you on this one. Yeah, he's a sequator. Mm -hmm. He knows that. Well, oh. I did it. I put see how much I remember. <laughs> <laughs> So it stacked the photos for me and it looks much cleaner and sharper now all of a sudden, you know, just it really cleaned up my sky. And so when I'm done, I'm going to have it say mean, min, whore, noise. There's a lot of these you can choose from, but that's the one I was always taught to use. And then save current image. And then it's just going to keep in that same folder that you had your stacks. And I like it there too, so I can always find the actual stack of mm -hmm. the, you know, the images. All right, and that's it. You just X out. So now there's my stack. And so I'll just go back into Lightroom. And I'll go back to Library and Import. Go to my stack. Uncheck all. Just grab the one I just did. Import that one. So see how that was noisy, right? And then now here's what it looked like stacked. Much cleaner. And now I can go in, look, I've got quite a bit of data here. And then I can go in and really start fine tuning. Be like, well, I kind of want to push my exposure up a little bit. Bring down contrast, highlights, yeah, let's kind of pop that. Shadows. Now when he And it's still a test. But it's still in as a tip right now. So you got a lot of data to manipulate. Right. Now he'll tell he can show you how to stretch a histogram, which is where you can take, like set these back to zero. And then you hold down on map, you hold down alt or option, and then you go to click on highlight and you can see where you're clipped and then you can get rid of it. And you can do the same. Okay, there's not really much. Shadows are really funny. And then whites. Same with black. Um, and then you can come down here and do vibrance and saturation to 100, right? And kind of mess with the temp and the tint. Yeah, for the color balance, yeah. He'll, so he's, he showed us this where you come down here to vibrance and saturation, you punch it all to 100, make it look weird. But you're looking here at your histogram, and then you come over here to your temp, and you're trying to make them together, right? Right, sort of balancing them so they're like that. as close as possible. And then... Like that. That looks good. Looks yeah. good. And now I'm back. And then back out of this crazy acid trip right here, back to zero. Ooh, no, not to Nubian. <laughs> zero. And now you've got a nice little balanced photo. And then you can go in and start really playing with other stuff. Like you can move your texture up a bit. Clarity, I, I usually pump it up a little bit. Dehaze, I'm going to pump it up a little bit. Vibrance, I move it up a little bit. And then you can even come down here and do a little bit of sharpening on the brush. And then, I don't know if y'all know, constrained crop auto is awesome, but if anything's crooked or any lines are distorted, it'll fix it for you and snap it in place. So, now I have a beautiful, clean image. And so you can see, where's my, oh, here we go. So there's before and after 
just basic editing. Wants more detail. Wants more detail. Let's get you caught up. Yes, let's get her caught up. She's gonna get back in Lightroom, and then you can take this photo because see you don't you use like another third party editing yeah, app fine. or software? It's, yeah, it's Affinity. Perfect. It's but it's just all here. Yeah, and then y'all after you get done with this, take it into Affinity and put your final twist on it, your style.